Hi everybody, Jacqueline here, and today I am going to go over how you can do hit a very hit effective workout on a bicycle. So there's a lots of different types of hit. There is um, Tabata, which is a 20-10 recovery, so you're 20 active, 10 second recovery, and you do that eight times. The one I'm going to do with you today is actually called Sprint 8. So I want you to be warmed up a little bit before you start. So I'm going to say a good five minute warm up. I don't have any music playing, so you can put some tunes on in the background. But make sure you can still hear me. I have a uh, timer going. It's not a Tabata timer. It is set to do Sprint 8. So Sprint 8 is very highly effective for, um, for creating such a high intensity and it's 30 seconds with a minute and a half recovery so i'll be talking a little bit through the recovery hence why i don't have music on to kind of distract you so i'm going to get onto the bike you'll hear my cleats coming in i do have bike cleats on bike cleats are phenomenal for if you have foot injuries or they're just better with regards to aerodynamics as well. They're very, they make your cycling very efficient. They put you in the right position already for cycling. And uh, I have a permanent foot injury from running too much as a youngster or as a young woman, well into my forties actually. <laughs> so um, you want to make sure that your feet, uh, the, the pedals can sometimes be very, very hard, especially if you're using soft Nike free or such type running shoes. Uh, you want to have firmer running shoes. So if you are going to use running shoes in the pedals, then you want to make sure that you have some running shoes that have a bit of substance to them, like trail running shoes. So I am going to get on my bike. We have approximately a minute 40 before the timer starts. It is an app. It is a free app. You can also upgrade um, to have it be a little bit less ads that come up while you're at it. Um, and it's called Interval Timer, and I've used it before. So here I am getting into my bike, have my clips on, and make sure that the length of my legs, I have a soft bend in the knee. My handlebars are in the right position. Bike seat is so important, but if you're watching this and you're going to do a uh, hit train on the bike, then I'm just going to put on my, my, my indoor cycling on my app so that my heart rate is there so that I know how hard I'm working. And the first 30 seconds, you're going to work as hard as you can. It's not a warm up. There are eight um, sets. And you're going to do eight and you have a minute and a half recovery, a minute and a half. If you need um, to go easy on the recovery, go ahead. If you want to start easier, please check with your doctor first if it's okay to do some kind of hit workout, especially like this is pretty high intensity. So you want to make 100% sure that you're okay and your doctor's okay with it. Because the last thing you want is something medically to go wrong. So... Uh, get a cardiac workup, especially if you're older, but um, the premise is to work as hard as you can for 30 seconds. So I'm going to do that. I want you to do that as well. The pink will be our 30 seconds, and I want you breathing hard. So you start to see, I'm going to breathe super, super hard because I'm going to do it with you, and I want you to see that even as a trainer and as a spin instructor, I'm going to push myself to my max. So you may not have me have a conversation in the next one coming. So 30 seconds, I'm going to take my gear down, I'm going to take my speed down, but I'm not resting. I'm just going to go slow. Slow enough so that I can get a recovery, get my heart rate to recover, and then I'm going to go super hard again. So. Coming up, you have a minute and a half. Tabata, quicker, faster, it's only four minutes. But this is about a 15 minute workout. And it is known, and it has been proven scientifically, that you produce human growth hormone when you do this type of intensity. 
you also burn more calories for hours after your workout. So, nice deep breaths. You've had lots of water to hydrate yourself beforehand. You have a nice extension in your knees. Do you have to cycle for this? No. A track, running on a track is fantastic for this kind of a workout. Running on a treadmill, a rowing machine, an elliptical, any kind of um, cardio equipment will be great for this kind of hit. So, previously we've done body weight. So here we go, I'm gonna pay, take my gears up, I'm gonna take my speed up. I'm not going over 110, I'm just gonna work as hard as I can as hard as I possibly can. You should feel almost like you can't anymore at the end of that 30 seconds. Keep going. Four. And take a little recovery. Breathe. So as soon as I can talk again. So the talk test is a great way for you to know, are you working hard enough? If you do not have a heart rate monitor, you're gonna do rate of perceived exertion. So you wanna be at the point where you're not talking, you're huffing and puffing, where you're almost going to throw up, I wanna say. <laughs> so it is an expression that we use often to give you the feel of where you should be at throughout your workout. So a recovery is just that. I'm able to just talk a little bit better now. And it's really 30 second sprint. It's called Sprint 8. There is also an app for Sprint 8. But you can use this 30 minute and a half recovery doing anything really, even body weight training, as long as you work to your max for that 30 seconds. You can walk it off, you can jog it off in between. Go for a little run, get a little jog, go for a fast walk, and then work your buns off again for that 30 seconds. So, here we go. Number three. I'm gonna push it up another gear. Breathing hard. Going as hard as I can. Obviously, I'm not gonna throw up, go so hard that I throw up while I'm talking to you guys, <laughs> or pass out, but you should be almost there. So, at your 90% effort for that 30 seconds, <sighs> slow you down again. Again, you don't wanna go out and do this if you haven't gotten checked out first. It's pretty intensive. If you're just getting into HIIT training, high intensity interval training, then I recommend going back to some of our last year posts on the Gains Thrival, and you will see a beginner, uh, intermediate and advanced workouts all there that I, I have done with you guys, so. So, but I'm doing fairly advanced here. There you go. So my recovery's coming back down. My recovery heart rate is in the 150s. So you can see that my recovery isn't going down to a It's meant to be a recovery. And that is the research behind it. And 20 seconds to go. And we're gonna get into the next one. And you'll burn more calories for much longer after your workout's done. And that's the whole idea behind high intensity interval training. So, here we go. Breathe, shoulders are back. Soft bend in the elbows. Don't hang your head if you're cycling. Breathe. 
work hard. You can do this, guys. Come on. Three, two, and one. Take a recovery. So, if time is something that you don't have a lot of, this is a fantastic way to get your exercise program in. So, I'm going to do my next couple out of the seat just because it could intensify for you. A lot of people, when they first start indoor cycling, being out of the seat is harder. For me, I have to go quite high in the gears to get that happening. So, fair bit to go, but you can tell I'm still breathing hard. My recovery, still in the 160s. My max, I'm sure, I'm getting into the 170s for my max HR. And I am 59. And I'm fit. So please don't go out and try this if you have not worked your way up to it. Super, super, super important. Some of the best recovery breaths you can take in through the nose, out through the mouth. Not during the workout, recovery, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put my gear up to be out of the seat. Here I go. I'm not gonna talk a bunch with you guys. I'm just gonna pedal and push. Do it with me, come on, you can do it. It's the best. back down, recover, and breathe. So let's check. Where's my heart rate at? Still really high. So I want you to think, what is my recovery heart rate? Try it a few times. For me, I know my recovery goes down generally to around the one, low 150s. My workout is max at around 175. I get dizzy at 178, so I know that's too hard. You don't want to go to the dizzy point. You just want to go to the point where you can't talk anymore. Comfortably, you're gasping for air. So, because I'm talking, So I'd recommend if you're just starting out, try for four. Four of them, not eight. Wait a day or two. Try again. If you're advanced, give yourself a day in between. Even if you're in the mid-range of fitness, give yourself a day or two in between. Here I go, I'm going back out. So my goal is to always keep my RPMs between 60 and 110. And you can tell I have a very high resistance. I'm on a hard climb. And my RPMs are 61. And it's making me work really hard. And I'm taking it down. So, some people have gears, some bike companies have gears. This is the Kaiser. It is my favorite. Um, doesn't matter what you have though, you can work it. You don't have to go out and buy a new bike. It's just very smooth, this one. Putting a plug in. But your Spin Fit Pros are awesome too. Your Peloton. Lots of different uh, options. This one pairs with Bluetooth. Amazing. A lot of them do. You don't have to have the monitor 
to do the peloton. You can have a screen, your screen, and you can get it going in there that way with the app. So that's something some people don't know. It's just something I'm gonna tell you. 25 seconds to go. If you're wondering how I know, I do have a mirror in this room, which you've probably seen in past workouts. So it's flashing at me what you guys are seeing here on the app. <laughs> I hope you're having fun. I hope you have some good tunes on. Music always makes it better. <laughs> Here we go. I'm gonna go high gears in the seat right now. Always breathe, never hold your breath. It's really easy to hold your breath. Keep going. You'll find as you do more and more sets, as you get closer to the eight, it's harder and harder to keep that 90% upper level. Yes, I kept my RPMs high, because I was in the seat, but the gear was high, trust me. <laughs> it was at a difficult level. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Recover. Sit up tall if you want to get more air in. Strength training is great. Cardio is important too. The heart is a muscle. So this is the first total cardio hit that I'm doing with you. So there's a reason why spin classes are so popular, especially now with the pandemic. You're indoors, you're by yourself, and it doesn't take a lot of room. This one tucks in right in the corner in front of my painting here, my beautiful painting. Oh, breathe. The dog today is not very active. Usually you guys see her in the picture. This is later in the afternoon than I usually do my videos, so. Are you ready? Set. And go. So in the heat, in the seat, it's usually between 60 and 90 RPMs you wanna stay at. You can go faster, but if you're doing a hill climb, you won't get there. And now I have to do a hill climb for the intensity. You take it down. So I'm gonna go for the next one. I think it's the last one. I'm going to do in the seat super fast. Super fast on a spin bike is 110 RPMs. If you are sprinting on the ground, you've been going super fast anyways for the whole time. So your recovery truly is a walk or a slight jog. if you're going to do the sprint eight. I found out about sprint eight through Sergeant Ken when I was taking my, my water rowing certification. And you can do your sprint eight on any cardio equipment. You just have to really give her for that 30 seconds. We got 25 seconds to go. So if my RPMs end up going over 110, I'm gonna take that gear up pretty darn quick because I wanna make this a really nice hard one. I think we have one more, I can't really tell from here. Hopefully we're not at warm up time or cool down time. <laughs> you wanna make sure you stretch after too. I give you lots of stretching options. Oh it is, shoot, that was the last one. All right. That was number eight, so here we go with the cool down. I'm just gonna leave it here. And cool it down for you guys. 
So there you have it. That was 17 minutes of hardcore. So really 16, because I talked for a little bit. But I want you to make sure, A, that you're warmed up before you start, and B, that you're cooled down at the end. Don't just jump off the bike, jump in your car if you've been doing sprints on a, um, on a field, like a track, or on a seawall, or on the road, and the ground, and the trails, wherever you're doing your sprint eight, you wanna make sure that you cool down after, and that you definitely stretch because the big muscle groups have been working super hard. Quads, hamstrings, glutes, calves, on a bike, sprinting, doesn't matter when. Those big muscle groups have worked. So I'll give you one last hint of what I love to do, and it's safe on the bike, for stretching my calves, because they do get really tight. So you can always go back if you have a roller, we've done a segment on rolling, we've done a segment on stretching, we've done a segment on so much for Ageless Thrival Games Magazine. So you guys can always check back. I'm really happy you joined today, joined me in my Sprint 8. Remember, every other day, it's not recommended every day, your heart needs recovery, your muscles need recovery. That's how they build muscle mass. That's how the body works. All right, so I'm gonna slow my pedals down. I'm gonna put one leg forward, straighten my leg, and push down with my back pedal. So there, I'm getting a super, super good stretch on my calf without taking the chance that my clip's coming out or that my foot's gonna come out you gotta make sure your straps are on tight. And other side, flexing my foot, straightening my leg, and pushing down on my back leg. And you can see I've recovered. I'm down at 125. The more you do this, the faster you will recover. So your heart rate will come down, your, also your max rate will go up the fitter you get. And the cool thing about this drill or this type of HIIT training is the more you do it, the better your results are gonna be with regards to how fast you recover and how high your heart rate can come. But again, you do not go to the point of getting dizzy. If you do, please stop, slow it down, see a doctor, get medical clearance before you start. Thank you so much everyone for joining me today and I hope to see you next month.